Quinn of Snazzy Labs, and this is the video review of the Drobo FS. Now the Drobo FS is a network attached RAID array, which is pretty amazing. Now for those of you that are just like, what on the earth is that? I'm going to tell you in just a second. Now the Drobo FS is the third of four Drobos for a home and small business kind of use and application. Now there is the original Drobo and the Drobo S, which are a four and five bay RAID array that give you the ability to connect to a singular computer via USB 2, USB 3, or Firewire 800. Now the Drobo FS is the third of four. It is a five bay RAID array that allows you to connect any 3.5 inch SATA disk to this unit. and it gives you full access on the network. There's a singular gigabit ethernet port on the back. You plug it into your network, you plug it into your router, your modem, what have you, and boom, it's accessible by any device on that network. It's pretty amazing. Now, for those of you that are wondering what is a network attached storage device and what is a RAID array, it's pretty simple. A NAS is simply a device that you plug into your router that allows you to access whatever is on this by anyone on your network. It's pretty amazing. Now, what is a RAID array? Now, RAID is actually a pretty old technology. It's been around for almost 25 years, but unfortunately, it has remained largely unchanged. In the past five to seven years, we've seen a lot of cheaper RAID arrays make it into a small business and a home environment. But the problem with RAID arrays is, well, they're not super easy to run. Even for geeky people, they can be a little bit intimidating because you need to know what you're doing. It sucks when something goes wrong. You need to know how to rebuild the RAID array. You need to get dirty with the terminal at points in time. And a lot of people are just not comfortable with that. And so that's what Drobo is designed to do. This is for anyone who's not a super big geek that wants to do it themselves. And even for super big geeks, the Drobo may be worth it because you don't have to do anything. You don't touch it. You don't have to spend hours figuring out what's wrong. The Drobo just does it for you. It's pretty awesome. Now, what a RAID array does is it ensures disk redundancy. So let's say I had a hard drive failure, and hard drive failures happen all the time. I cannot even tell you how many times they happen. Uh, hard drives are just like um, vehicles or light bulbs. You know, they, they, they break, they burn out, they're done. And hard drives have become increasingly more reliable over the past few years, but that still doesn't mean they're foul proof and they fail all the time. Nothing sucks worse than taking your computer into an Apple Store Genius or whatever and they say, sorry, your hard drive has failed. We're going to have to give you a new one. And you say, well, will I have all my files and all my data on there? And they say, no. You can take it to a hard drive recovery place. They'll charge you six, seven, eight hundred dollars and the majority of the time they can only get like 30 or 40 percent of the data off of your hard drive. It sucks. And so first of all, A, back up all of your stuff and B, have a Drobo so you don't have to worry about backing up stuff. This thing takes care of it for you. Now, RAID arrays offer redundancy. What happens is I can have a hard drive fail and boom, I don't lose a single bit of data because the hard drive uh, or all of the data is separated amongst all of the drives equally uh, multiple times so that if one drive does fail, I pop a new drive in, it rebuilds and I'm ready to go. I don't lose any data. Now it still sucks when a hard drive fails, but it's not that big of a deal. Now with Drobo, it doesn't even suck if a hard drive fails. You go out, you find a bigger hard drive, you throw it in there, and the Drobo does everything for you. It rebuilds it, it ensures that no datum is lost, it gives you dual disk redundancy, with which RAID 0, 1, and 5 do not give you, uh, but this does some seriously cool stuff, and I'm gonna show you on uh, my computer right now, because I can tell you, if you're a video editor, if you're a photographer, if you have just lots of media sitting around that you want backed up or shared across the network, the Drobo FS is the way to go. And this is like the unit that if you need more than what's on your computer, if you want to share across multiple networks, don't get like an HP like sharing unit via Windows Media Center and crap like that, just get a Drobo. It's mountable, it does a lot of cool stuff, and I'm gonna show you right now. Let's get started. So I told you Drobo was cool, but now I'm actually going to show you how cool it can be. Now, before we get started, I do wanna kind of explain the front face of the Drobo, the lights, the indicators, and what they mean. First of all, I do want to show you the user's manual. Right there. That's how you know the Drobo couldn't be more simple than it actually is. You have a certain pattern of lights that indicate to you if your system is healthy, if it needs attention, you need to add a drive, or if your system is in critical condition. This is a nice little magnetic cover that's attached to the front of the Drobo. One thing that is worth noting, it is glossy, so it picks up lint and dirt and fingerprints and scratches like nobody's business, which is less to be desired. But other than that, we have the face of the Drobo. You have five indicator lights by the five bays. As I stated, I only have three two terabyte drives and these bays are left empty, which means I only have one 
uh, drive redundancy. I can only have one hard drive failure at the same time. But if I have four hard drives in here, I could have two drive redundancy. So two drives could fail at the same time and I'm still safe, which is pretty awesome. Now, these indicators next to the drives indicate whether the drive is healthy. And down here, we have an array of lights. We have a green light here and a green light here. This one indicates that the Drobo is indeed on. And this dro er, light indicates that datum is being transferred from the Drobo to another machine. Now, these are 10 blue LEDs below the face of the unit, and none of them are turned on right now because my capacity is so great on here. Uh, we're actually in the process of moving our entire library of uh, media over to the Drobo. Uh, we threw a movies on and a couple of other things to try it, sandbox this and have fun with this, but now we're actually moving to it full time. So right now the Drobo is pretty much empty. I think there's only a couple gigs worth of stuff on it, but once you fill up 10%, one, group, or one blue light's going to come on. Once you fill up 80%, two or eight blue lights are going to come on, and that will indicate to you, okay, it's time to buy a new driver. It's time to replace a drive with a larger size. Now, another great thing is you can mix and match drives. You could have a two terabyte drive, a one terabyte drive, and a 250 gigabyte drive. Now, on a regular RAID array, that's not the case. If you had one 250 gigabyte drive here, it wouldn't matter what the rest of the drives are. These are all limited to 250 gigabytes, not with the Drobo. Two gigabytes, one gigabyte, 20, 250 gigabytes, 500 gigabytes, it doesn't matter. You throw anything in there and the Drobo is going to play nice with it, which is really, really awesome. Now. I want to show you a piece of software on the Drobo called Drobo Dashboard, which is very, very cool. It's made for both Mac and Windows. And uh, if we open it up here, you can see the status and the health of your Drobo, how much space is being used. So you can see, again, we only have 80, uh, 84 gigabytes of the 3.58 terabytes available being used. However, you can see that there are a majority of tools such as check for updates, register, diagnostics, etc., etc. The blink lights is funny. If you have so many Drobos, you can't keep track of all of them. You can blink the lights on the Drobo you're selecting. It'll say, hey, this is the one you're, you're modifying, which is kind of funny. But I do want to show you three really awesome features that are available in Drobo Dashboard. And these are just my three favorite. There are tons of features that you can use in the software. The first one is going to be the shares. Now, you can mount a certain different number of shares on the Drobo. So they appear as mountable drive, even though they are just a part of this singular Drobo. Now, why are shares cool? First of all, they're a consolidated volume. So if you wanted to create a bootable backup, no problem. You create a bootable share and you're good to go, which is really awesome. You don't have to mix and match with like your music library and stuff like that. You can consolidate stuff. Additionally, you can have user accounts. So I could have an admin. I could be the admin, I could have another user that has access to his share, another access, or user that has access to their share. And this is really cool because if you have, for example, a backup like this one, this is locked to the administrator. Unless I, the admin, is logged in, no one else can access this share, which is good because I don't have to worry about people tampering with files, moving stuff around, out of sight, out of mind. You create a share, allow that user to use it, make it public, and close the ones you don't want people tampering with, and you're good to go. That's all you need to do, and it's really awesome. You just have the Drobo dashboard installed, you click mount, and that folder will mount onto your machine. Now, I can't mount the public share because that is public, but I could, for example, unmount my Quinn MacBook Pro backup, and as you can see on my desktop, it's, uh, it's now gone, which is pretty, pretty cool. So. If we click the status right here, you can see the different drives in the Drobo, uh, the space used, total free, et cetera, et cetera, not a whole lot in there. This just shows you how much you can change in the Drobo dashboard. You can dim the lights on the front of the Drobo. So if it's in a room where you're sleeping or whatever, you can turn the lights so that they're a lot more dim, which is funny. There's so much functionality in this software. And as you can see, it takes a few seconds, but the lights are dimmed. It's funny, it's great, and Drobo allows you to do so much stuff with your actual Drobo. But the other two things that I think are really, really cool, which separate it from the rest of the RAID arrays, are Drobo Copy and Drobo Email. Now, Drobo Copy is really awesome because I could create a source folder and a destination folder to be backed up every single night or every other night or at different time intervals. Uh, intervals. So for example, let's say I'm a photographer and I shoot hundreds of photos every day. Well, rather than manually moving those over to the Drobo and making sure everything's insured and everything's backed up, I just say, okay, uh, take my big old photos folder and copy all of that stuff into a new folder on the Drobo. And you can archive it, you can do a bunch of different stuff, and the Drobo will do it automatically. It's really, really awesome and it kind of alleviates the need for a lot of software like SuperDuper and uh, uh, some of the other ones out there. Now, 
If we go into email settings here on the dashboard, you can choose to email alert you, which is really cool. Uh, we had a 250 gigabyte drive in here initially with the other three two terabyte drives just to play around with, just to see. And that drive failed and we got an email saying the drive has failed. Uh, you know, you're still safe, you still have a lot of capacity left, but we're just letting you know that we can't sustain another hard drive failure. That was kind of it. So you, you should probably get home and replace that hard drive quick. And so that's really handy. If you have something go wrong, you can see that there, uh oh, something's wrong and you can have someone replace it for you if you can't do it yourself. But that's pretty awesome and no other RAID array does that. But I actually wanna show you some real hands-on, like this is why the Drobo is cool. And so I'm gonna take this Drobo uh, cover off and I am going to start playing Tron Legacy. Now I'm gonna open this with VLC and the movie is going to begin playing pretty much immediately. It's a large file, it's a 1080p video. It's like eight or nine gigs or something like that, so it's pretty big, and I'm gonna make this half size, and I'm going to pull up the Drobo dashboard so you can see how this all happens in real time. But uh, what happens is I click my Drobo, I click the status, and here we go. So this movie is playing. There are no stutters, there is nothing wrong with this video. It's perfect, right? Well, that's because it's playing on all three of these drives. What were to happen if I were to yank a drive? Take note that on a regular RAID array, this would not be the case. Let's jump to a little bit of where there's some action so you can kind of see how it doesn't even stutter. Okay, so watch this. I'm gonna take drive two and let's uh, simulate a drive failure. I'm gonna yank this out. The video did not even skip a singular frame. The Dropo dashboard software knows immediately that a drive was removed and it says, whoa, hold on, and it begins to data protect that software. It moves all of the redundancy that was spread across all three drives and move it to these two drives so no other issues occur, which is really, really cool. Now, what I can also do is this. Uh, let's say I got a new drive, my hard drive has not failed anymore, and all I have to do is plug it into any slot. Now, with a regular RAID array, you'd have to place it into the original slot. You don't have to do that on the Drobo. You just take the drive, you throw it in, and you're good to go. You can hot swap drives, you can do so much stuff with this, and it really just, it, it does it all for you. You place the drive cover back on, give it 10 to 15 seconds for that drive to spin up, and it will be recognized by the Drobo dashboard software, or just the Drobo itself, and the Drobo begins to rebuild its entire architecture, which is pretty darn amazing. Really, really cool. The video didn't stop playing a singular time, and that makes it absolutely prime for Video editing, I use this as a scratch disk all the time. I deal with gigabytes upon gigabytes upon gigabytes of raw datum, and my internal hard drive simply can't handle it. The Drobo doesn't even give up a snuff. It is at maximum performance, so it's not like I'm ever like, oh, I wish this was faster. It's a fast hard drive, and uh, that makes it for one of the best scratch disks you can get. Uh, it's not only that, it's a media server. It can be anything you want Drobo to be. It really is an amazing piece of hardware and I cannot recommend it any more highly. The original $699 price point is a little bit tough to swallow. It's a little bit up there. And if you don't plan to share all of your data across the network, you don't need to. Just share it on a Drobo or a Drobo S. They have cheaper options available. But I can tell you a Drobo is the way to go when you need lots of storage and you don't wanna worry about it because RAID arrays are a pain to maintain. They're a really big issue. Stand Standardized or singular hard drives have high failure rates. It's just a mess. And Drobo is the way that you can have 100% assurance that all of your data is fine, all the while not having to worry or manage about it. Thanks so much for watching. Please subscribe, rate, comment. My final review on the Drobo is a 9 out of 10. It does an excellent job at just about anything. The only problems that I've seen with it are if you're not on a gigabit ethernet connection, it can be very, very slow. We have that hooked up in my house, but some households may not have the correct switches or the correct routers to deal with this. Additionally, it takes quite a bit of time to spin up, so if you haven't used the Drobo for you know, a couple hours, and well, you can choose the settings. If you never want it to spin down, you can do that, but I have it spin down after 30 minutes. But after 30 minutes, when I access the Drobo, it'll probably take 30 seconds for it to appear on the network, which can be kind of annoying. However, the Drobo is the way to go. I'm seriously so happy with it. I couldn't be any more happy with it, and I recommend you check it out. Drobo.com for the Drobo FS. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe, rate, comment, and as always, stay snazzy. See you later, folks.